Hello folks, this is Sula once again. Welcome to the patch review for patch 4.12. This is essentially the Lucian rework patch. That's the most major things in here. It's a relatively minor patch as league patches go. There's not too much in this one, but let's go ahead and get started and run through the changes. I suppose the other big thing that's in this patch is the addition of the jungle timers. So let's start right here. Jungle timers have been added to League of Legends. This has been a bit of a controversial thing. Some people very much being against the addition of the automatic jungle timers. I guess I'll first start by explaining how they work. Jungle timers currently track the next spawn time of the red and blue buff, your team's red and blue buff, Elder Lizard and Ancient Golem, as well as the dragon and the baron. Basically, if anyone on your team has vision of the any of these things dying, then you will get an automatic timer that will count down until they appear next. So that's five minutes for the red and blue buff, six minutes for dragon, and seven minutes for baron. Again, the timers will only start tracking a camp if you or a teammate directly witness a camp being fully cleared. Again, as it says here, similar to the minimap icon. So if you don't have vision of the other team clearing their red or blue buff, then you will not get the timer on that. If you manage to snipe Dragon or Baron without vision, the timer will set itself off. And you can access the jungle timers by pressing the tab key. That's the default. You can rebind it, of course. Then that makes them appear at the top of the screen. They also updated the monster minimap icons. It's a slightly different icon for the Dragon and the Baron. The Baron has a purple icon, and I think the Dragon one is orange. It looks a little bit different from the other monster minimap icons. So basically, Riot pretty much had to do this because there was widespread proliferation of third-party programs, most notably Curse Voice. Basically, programs that were outside the League of Legends client that were tracking these things. So basically, if they didn't provide this option themselves, people were just going to download other programs and use it to track the jungle timers for them. So it definitely made more sense to just put these in the game, give everyone access to them, rather than giving players who downloaded third-party programs an advantage on them. Now that said, there are quite a few people in the community who don't like the addition of the timers, who think that they shouldn't be in the game, who think that people should be tracking this manually, that it gives an unfair advantage to players who are lazy or who don't track stuff. Where I come down on this would be firmly in the opposite camp. I think that Tracking jungle timers manually is not interesting. It doesn't really add anything to the gameplay. The fact that people have been taking timers for ages is great. I mean, it obviously helps you out when you know that a dragon or a baron or an enemy blue buff, when that's going to respawn, obviously that's helpful. But it is just ultimately busy work. It, I mean, the fact that you're tracking the timers manually doesn't really add anything to the gameplay. It's the kind of thing that the interface really should handle on its own. So I'm glad that the interface has now been updated so that it will do that and you don't have to do much. Uh, you don't have to do as much work on your own. People might argue that that's part of the gameplay, but uh, honestly, I think it's more in the way of busy work. Uh, memorizing numbers and keeping track of timers is not doesn't really make for good gameplay. So I'm happy that the interface will just keep track of that. Uh, you're welcome to disagree, but that's kind of my stance on it. As someone who typed many a jungle timer into the chat over the last uh, four years now, certainly did a lot of that myself, but I'm happy to let the game handle it. And after all, if you don't have vision, you don't get the timer. So that seems like a pretty fair compromise to me. Anyway, it's in the game, and you can check it out. As it says, you can see them by pressing tab. They do not display normally. You do have to hit a key to make them appear, and that's kind of nice as well, that they're not permanently on the screen. All right, champion buffs and nerfs and all that jazz. Again, these are relatively minor in this patch. The biggest change is coming to Lucian. Ari got a buff. I'm not exactly sure why Ari got a buff. They basically lowered the mana cost on her Q, her Orb of Deception. They've cut the mana cost at all ranks by 15, and they increased the ability power ratio. Not by much, very minor amount. The ability power ratio 0.325 up to 0.35. Why does it say total 0.7? It, to include the orb that when it goes out and when it comes back again is the idea there. So a very modest buff to Ari. Why did Ari get buffed and not a, lot, not a lot of other mid laners who don't see much play. That, I'm not exactly sure. You would think that a champion like, say, I don't know, Velkaz, who's never been used in competitive play since he came out, or some poor sap like Victor, you'd think they would be getting buffs. But uh, I guess Ari is just a more popular champion, so she gets more attention. You know Ari's a popular champion by the amount of people who go around cosplaying her at conventions and stuff. So, anyway. 
Alistar receiving fairly sizable buffs in this patch, and again, I'm not quite sure why. Alistar kind of sitting on the edge of the competitive scene has been used by a couple players, most notably CounterLogic's Aphromu has used Alistar a fair amount. So I'm not exactly sure why he got these buffs, but he, he got quite a few. First and foremost, they have removed the trample damage from his passive on jungle monsters. This is a way to stop jungle Alistar from being a thing, removed jungle cow, so this means Basically, it's impossible to play Alistar as a jungler now, at least in any kind of serious, non-troll fashion, because his passive no longer damages monsters. That's actually a good thing for support Alistar, though, because it means you won't accidentally steal jungle camps from your jungler or from solo laners. So this is actually a good thing for a, a support Alistar, the fact that that's removed. Pulverize, they slightly changed the functionality. Instead of a 1.5 second knockup, it's now a 1 second knockup followed by a half second stun. And functionally, there's not much of a difference there. I suppose it changes the interactions with someone like Yasuo a little bit, but for all intents and purposes, that's no different. The big change is the mana cost. Uh, they have dropped the mana cost very sizably here, particularly at higher ranks. At rank 1, it went from 70 to 65, so that's not much. But at rank 5, it went from 110 down to 85, and that's a major buff to Alistar. They did the exact same thing for the headbutt. Cut the mana cost drastically. That really does matter, because Alistar is a champion who has serious issues with mana. He runs out of mana very easily if you're spamming his QW, his, pulverite, headbutt, his uh, headbutt pulverize combo. He runs out of mana quickly, so the fact that they've cut the mana cost on his combo from 220 down to 170... That's a major drop in mana cost, so this helps him helps the cow quite a bit. Then, they, if that wasn't enough, they also buffed his ultimate by quite a bit. They changed the damage reduction on his ultimate from 50%, 60%, 70% on rank 1, 2, and 3, up to a flat 70% at all ranks. And that's a very questionable decision there, because I specifically remember when it was 70% at all ranks. It used to be 70% at all ranks. It was very, very strong. It made it extremely easy to tower dive at level 6 with Alistar. And that was why they changed it to make it scaling. Now they've gone back to it being a flat 70% at all ranks. That's a lot of power to give Alistar at level, uh, level 6. The fact that he can walk in and just tank tower shots at 70% reduced damage at level 6 is pretty crazy. So I don't know why Alistar was buffed so heavily. Somebody, It's just one of those things where Riot will sometimes make a change and you're just like... What? Why why'd you do that? Alistar was fine. You know, he didn't didn't really need this. But it certainly makes Alistar a very good support once again. Very good. And for people who actually play Alistar, which apparently is pretty much just Aphromo in the competitive scene, that's uh, an awful good thing. So if you're a CLG fan, you have to be very happy with these changes because Alistar was on, as I said, sort of a borderline viable support already, and now he's gone from being borderline viable to being a very strong support. So we will have to see. We'll have to see, but I expect we'll see him quite a bit more in the competitive scene, particularly due to this ult change. This ult change allows for setting up a lot of plays in the competitive scene. That damage reduction is very strong. All right, other stuff, relatively minor stuff. Fixed a bug with Caitlyn where basic attacks were registering as attacks before they hit the target, so relatively minor there. A modest buff to Ezreal, but something that might allow him to see a little bit more competitive play. They made it so Ezreal can hit himself with Essence Flux. This is, gives the attack speed buff to allies when it hits them. Now it can hit Ezreal in addition to his allies. The way that you do this is you Arcane Shift into the Essence Flux. What this does mean, though, is if Ezreal hits himself with Essence Flux and he has his passive completely stacked up, he actually gets a 90% attack speed buff. It's 50% on his passive and 40% on Essence Flux. That's a lot of bonus attack speed, and that might be enough to make Ezreal viable again. The big issue with Ezreal is his... Bread and butter thing is always his mobility, the fact that Ezreal has his arcane shift to move around. And unfortunately for Ezreal, he hasn't seen much play lately because this guy also gives you great mobility and is just generally better than Ezreal. So will this get enough to play, get will is this enough to get people to play Ezreal? I do not know, but it does add a little bit of extra functionality to his kit. Garen, this one's for Garen junglers. They have fixed it so Garen can now use Tiamat. Tiamat and Ravenous Hydra while using his E. So for anyone who plays Jungle Garen, and I know there are a couple people who do that, he's able to build uh, Tiamat and Ravenous Hydra and use it with his spin to win, his judgment. As for Kassadin, Kassadin has been permanently banned even after his many reworks. So that means there needs to be more Kassadin reworks. 
or excuse me, more cast and nerfs here. So they have hit the cooldown on his W, his nether blade. That's a big deal because it's his W that allows Kastin to lane, to sit in lane and farm minions really effectively. So this is a hit to Kastin's laning, not so much his team fighting, but his laning. And then they shifted around his E, his force pulse a little bit. They cut the slow duration from three seconds to one, but they did increase the slow amount. In fact, at rank 5, it's 90% slow, which is pretty crazy. But it does only last for one second. So overall, it's probably a little bit weaker, but it does give Kassadin more immediate burst. I suppose it's possible for him to walk in and hit everyone on the enemy team with a 90% slow for one second, which is pretty impressive. But the duration is a lot lower. So overall, definitely a nerf. But the Force Pulse is less of a nerf, more shifting around the way that the skill works. The Nether Blade is just an out-and-out nerf. Kha'Zix here, Kha'Zix has gotten a minor buff. Kha'Zix was destroyed in recent patches. He went from being a, well, probably too strong jungler into someone who just just got destroyed by nerf. So they're trying to give him a little bit of power back. Increasing the damage done by his Q, the Taste Their Fear. Uh, it's been added, what is it, it's 15 more damage at all ranks. So a little bit extra stuff there, but it's probably not enough to save Kha'Zix at this point. Kha'Zix is not in a good place. Not that Kha'Zix has ever been in, in a good place. He's always been either really overpowered, too strong, or too weak. And I think that that's inherent in the way his kit has set up, as far as his design goes. Alright, so the big change in this patch is the change to Lucian. As we said, Lucian has just been in almost every single competitive game for the entirety of Season 4. We've mentioned this before. He does, or he did before the rework, did everything so well. Uh, mobility on his E, great mobility, wave clear on his ultimate and his Q, safety, he has, you know, the ability to uh, stay back at safe range, he's a little bit on the low range, low side for range at 550, but was able to stay back in a relatively safe position, was able to trade really effectively, could be a lane bully, I mean, the guy just did everything well, like, there was nothing he did badly as a champion, so they wanted to rework Lucian to put him in more of a situation where he, he sort of had a definitive gameplay, as opposed to just, oh, Lucian, yeah, he does everything really well, so he can just be played in all situations and in all team comps. That's not good. So let's look at what they've done. First of all, when I first saw these changes, I thought Lucian was going to be destroyed by these changes because they cut his attack range from 550 to 500. Uh, 500 is Sivir's attack range. It's the lowest attack range on any AD carry, and that's really brutal. Uh, cutting his range is just just really, really painful. To 500 range, it means you are outranged by basically every single AD in the game. You, you don't even have as much attack range as Graves. Graves is 525, so that looks really brutal. Now, to compensate, they increased his movement speed. His movement speed is actually quite high uh, because 320 is the minimum, and he actually was at 330. Now it's even higher. It's 335, so that's actually quite high. That's movement speed of most melee champions. You don't typically see that on many ADs. And in fact, there's a good chance this will go back down in future patches. They also increased his base health by 30, and that's quite a bit. 30 more health at level 1 is a big deal. And they buffed his attack damage as well, 49 up to 52. So that's, I mean, all of this stuff is pretty significant. So, yes, the range nerf is brutal, but he did get other stats back in turn. Uh, fixed a bug with, with a passive with Light Slinger that it would incorrectly predict the first shot would be enough. Now we'll always follow the double tap rule by shooting a near dead champion twice to secure the kill. Very minor, but nice bug fix. Piercing Light. All right, so some changes here. They cut the cast range on Piercing Light as well. So same with the auto attack from 550 down to 500. That hurts a lot. But there's some other things that were given back to make up for that. Piercing Light now deals 100% damage to minions, so it makes it a better farming tool. Even says here, farm, farm scene for Lucian. And they also cut the mana cost as well. And this wasn't exactly a high mana cost to begin with. It was pretty modest before, but now it's extremely spammable. 50 mana at rank 1, 70 mana at rank 5. And Lucian's typically max this first, so you're going to be using this quite a bit. So lower range, but deals more damage to minions, easier to farm, lower mana cost, extremely spammable skill. The real change, though, comes to the Relentless Pursuit. And there's really a couple big things that change this right here. This skill has been buffed enormously. New, now with more relentlessness. Cooldown isn't reduced by one second per passive hit. Doubles against enemy champions. So that's a two second reduction per hit. Four seconds total for a full passive proc. If you hit a champion with both 
uh, both little shots on your passive, you get a four second reduction on this. That's a big deal to begin with. Next, no mana cost at all ranks. Doesn't cost anything. So this is your clear one, you, you know, can be a one point skill, zero mana at all ranks. Although Lucians will typically max this second, or typically max this second. They'll max the Q first, they'll now max this second. So you'd really only need one point in the W in the Ardent Blaze, and that's just to proc his passive. New ability as well. Lucian now resets his basic attack timer upon dashing. So if you dash, you can immediately auto attack after uh, afterwards. So the basic idea is auto attack, dash, auto attack again, and you get an extra auto attack in there. Cooldown also reduced. Instead of 18 seconds scaling down to 10, it's now 14 seconds scaling down to 10. But as I said, you'll probably max this second after the Q in order to get down to the 10 second uh, cooldown. And they did remove the fact that the, the Relentless Pursuit no longer resets on a kill during the culling, but that's fairly minor. That wasn't all that useful before. It was relatively minor. All right, so what does this mean? Well, this has opened up a new build for Lucian, which is the cooldown reduction Lucian build. And people have been doing this very effectively in solo queue. You may have already seen a thread, if you're reading League of Legends Reddit, you may have already seen the Lucian Bolt uh, build. <laughs> based on dashing around. So the way that this works is get max CDR on Lucian. And it typically looks something like Brutalizer for 10% CDR, Boots of Lucidity for another 10% uh, cooldown reduction, and then you use Runes and Masteries. You can get, I think you can get 10% uh, CDR from Runes if you run all blue cooldown reduction glyphs. I think it's right around 10%. Then you can get 5% from Masteries and what? You can either get Blue Buff or it's like one more item. Um, I can't remember, but you get basically the idea is you get 40% CDR on Lucian with a build that's not completely ridiculous, as I said. I think it's mostly based around Brutalizer and getting the cooldown boots. That then gives you 40% CDR. So it goes on the cooldown from 10 seconds down to 6. 6 second cooldown on its Relentless Pursuit. Remember, if your passive hits an enemy champion, you get 4 seconds off that. So what does that mean? Well, as long as you're proccing your passive, Two second cooldown on Lucian's dash. Yeah, two second cooldown. And it's worse than that. Lucian resets his basic attack timer upon dashing. So, yeah, as soon as he dashes, you get another auto attack, which then procs your passive, which then cuts four seconds off your dash again. So it's basically auto attack, dash, auto attack, dash, auto attack, dash, auto attack, dash, and you're dashing every two seconds. Dash in, dash out. It's pretty ridiculous kiting with the Lucian setup. So Riot may have created a monster here. I don't know for sure because this hasn't been used in the competitive scene yet, uh, but in solo queue it is just wrecking people's faces. Now the trade-off is Lucian's laning phase is weaker because of his attack range being so much smaller. He has a weak laning phase, but oh my god, if he gets out of laning phase and gets to 40% CDR, he is almost uncatchable. Uh, he can dash so much he's almost impossible to catch. It's basically like an 80 version of Kassadin, or a ranged 80 version of Kassadin. That's what people are comparing it to, Kassadin's Rift Walk. A weak laning phase, but if you get out of laning phase, Lucian is basically impossible to catch up to if you're playing him correctly. Almost impossible, unless you can CC him and lock him down. In the same way that Kassadin was like that too. You have to CC him and uh, crowd control him, I should, I should explain that. Crowd control him and lock him down. So, as I said, the test will be what this does in the competitive scene, in the LCS, in OGN, in LPL, and we haven't seen that yet, but the early indications are Lucian has a different style of gameplay, but he is very, very strong indeed. So, we'll see. It might be one of those things that only works in solo queue, but the early indications are this looks he looks as strong as ever. He's not going away. Alrighty, let's look at the other champions. Minor stuff here. Nautilus, passive, staggering blow, fixed a bug where Nautilus's enemies could see his countdown indicator. Whoops, that doesn't seem like they should be able to see that. Quinn, some bug fixes, give her a little bit more consistency in play. With her E, her vault, now her vault always causes Valor to immediately mark the target, even if Valor's in the process of marking another nearby enemy. And fixed a bug where Quinn would sometimes, sometimes propel herself in the wrong direction. Quinn is still a champion that is just pretty much never going to be used because she is a ranged AD who does not fit in a duo lane, and that's a bad combination. Also, her ult is a nightmare because her ult makes her melee ranged, and why would you want a ranged AD to become melee? Doesn't really make sense. So yeah, Quinn, Quinn is just a champion who was not designed to fit the metagame and therefore never sees play. 
Rengar, bug fix. Rengar will now correctly say a line whenever he upgrades his Bone Tooth Necklace. Well, that's very important. Fixed a bug where Savagery was triggering on hit effects twice. Well, that's pretty minor there. Velcaw's Q. Plasma Fission will now split after Velcaw's has died. Well, great. That means his Q will automatically split when he dies. Well, whoop de doo That does nothing. I'm a little bit surprised Velcaw's hasn't received any buffs. It's pretty clear he needs them. I'm a little bit disappointed we've never seen him in the competitive scene, or really played much in solo queue either, because he's a neat champion, a cool idea for a champion, but it's clear the numbers on him are just a little bit too low, and for whatever reason, Riot's never attempted to buff him. So, a bit of a swing and a miss on that champion, unfortunately. Which is a shame, because he's got a genuinely interesting kit, but just not viable in the competitive scene right now. Yasuo E fixed a bug where Sweeping Blade sometimes didn't count as a spell cast for various items and champion abilities. Okay, relatively minor. Passive Short Fuse fixed a bug where Satchel Charge wasn't properly reducing Short Fuse's cooldown. Alright, all minor stuff there. We do have some itemization changes. Let's look at Bloodthirster. Bloodthirster, they just shifted around the functionality a little bit. More lifesteal, 15% lifesteal up to 20%. The lifesteal is unique. What that means is you can't stack multiple Bloodthirsters. You can't stack multiple PTs. It does still work with Vamp Scepter, Blade of the Ruined King, Ravenous Hydra, etc. But you can't stack more than one Bloodthirster because the life... I mean, you could, but you wouldn't get the extra lifesteal. The Blood Shield, they decreased the value a little bit from... It was 50 to 440, now it's 50 to 350, so it's a little bit less. But the time before the shield decays is increased significantly, 15 seconds up to 25. Overall, I would say this is a buff to Bloodthirster, just on the whole, because you get more lifesteal and you have longer until the shield decays when out of combat. Yes, the value at the max, max rank is a little bit lower, but honestly, I do feel like this item is slightly better overall for most situations, due to the extra lifesteal, due to the time before shield decays. But, uh, in, I mean, in some situations it might not be as good, because it is 90 less health at the max there. But overall, I think that this is kind of a buff for Bloodthirster. I, I suppose it depends on the situation. Essence Reaver, they have increased the cost and increased the damage. So look at this, they increased the cost significantly from 2650 to 3400. It now doesn't build out of pick fat, uh, it now doesn't build out of a pickaxe, it builds out of a BF sword. And the attack damage went from 60 to 80. Here's the problem with this setup. They did this, Riot did this, to try and make Essence Reaver slot efficient. What that means is before, people wouldn't build this because it wasn't efficient, an efficient enough use of a slot. Uh, you know, you had a, a, an item in that slot would take up a slot, but originally it only gave 50 attack damage, so it was not slot efficient. Now it is slot efficient. It does provide 80 attack damage. It does provide lifesteal. It does provide cooldown reduction. The problem, though, is that in order to get the mana, like, you don't get the mana, uh, don't get that mana bonus on Essence Reaver until the item is complete. The problem is, you don't get that extra mana until you finish the item, and it's 3,400 gold. That's very expensive. You're not going to finish that until 15 to 20 minutes into the game. By the time you finish your Essence Reaver, you're not really going to need that mana because you'll, you know, you'll have some extra levels. What they probably should do is, I don't know, people have suggested that maybe make this build out of Tear of the Goddess, and then, you know, you'd actually get some mana benefit before you finish the item. Maybe that would help. But the problem is the item's caught between being slot efficient, which means making it, you know, have a lot of AD, costing a lot of gold, and having that mana appear early in the game when you'd actually need it. So the item is still in an awkward place overall. Now, that said, it does give lifesteal. It does give cooldown reduction. It does provide a lot of attack damage. So I'm, I'm thinking that there are some builds that might want this. Uh, in particular, the CDR means it might be useful for the new Lucian setup. Maybe. Hard to say. But uh, it might be a really nice item for the new Lucian build. We'll see. So the item is still in kind of a weird place, but, I mean, Riot's trying. They're tinkering with it. I just don't think they've quite found the right place for this yet. It's so expensive that it takes so long to complete, you probably won't need that mana bonus until you're... You know, you won't get this until you're level 10 or so, 10 or like level 9, 10, 11, and by then you usually don't have mana issues. All right, anyway, Ardent Sensor, a lot of people thought this item would be really strong when it came out, but it turned out no one was really using it, and it actually wasn't that strong. So they've just given a straight up buff, 10 more ability power. So that's actually quite nice. We'll see if that gets people to build this. It might work well on Alistar, but we'll see. Mount Immune, they have shifted this around a little bit. They have made it 100 more gold. 
for five extra attack damage, but it's really the build path here. They've given it a nicer build path. Instead of tier plus longsword and then a 1,000 gold combined cost, that's bad. You don't really want an item that has a massive combined cost. They've changed it so it's tier plus pickaxe plus 625. That's a much nicer build path. So overall, this is a buff to Mount Immune, and champions who build Mount Immune will like this because there's not that oh my god, I have to save up a thousand gold to get the combined cost, and I'm going to be totally useless while I'm saving up this gold. Now you have a smoother path. You can get tier plus pickaxe, and that's generally better in most situations. Sunfire Cape, no change to the item, but they've made the visuals look more fiery and aggressive, so that's nice. Exhaust, same thing. They've updated the exhaust particles to make it easier to see. That's a, that's a major thing, because I have saw the exhaust particles before, or didn't see them, when maybe would be more precise, it was very hard to see exhaust in the middle of a team fight. They gave it a new graphical effect, but they made exhaust really hard to see. So they've Im improved that. I have yet to see this in-game. I need to watch some. I haven't seen too much of the new patch yet. I have to look at this and see the new particle effects. So hopefully it'll be easier to see. Now most of the rest of the stuff is for the other maps. For the Aura map, Helling Abyss, for Twisted Tree Line. And I think there's even, yeah, stuff for the, the Dominion map, Crystal Scar. So I'm not going to talk too much about this. They removed the jungle items from Howling Abyss because there's really no reason to have them there. Twisted Tree Lion fixed a bug with monsters. They toned down the elixirs, which had too long of a duration for Twisted Tree Lion. And changed around Ancient Golem, which had a ward active, and you can't place wards on Twisted Tree Lion. So, whoops, that's not supposed to happen. Kale, what is this? A Kale uh, nerf on Twisted Tree Lion. And some item rebalancing. Lord Van Damme's Pillager, Grez's Spectral Lantern, the Lamp Lightbringer. I'm afraid, I'm sorry, I don't don't play these maps. I don't not familiar with the competitive scene on these maps. Have to get someone else to comment intelligently on these. They've added a new type of bots, the intro bots, designed uh, it's basically like a tutorial. Intro bots are essentially a tutorial. Very easy bots that also give you what's this, give you some extra tutorial style features designed to help learn basic features. That's very nice. New audio engine. Added proper support for stereo sound, made subtle improvements to audio clarity, made improvements to stereo imaging and panning. Good stuff there. Some more bug fixes. Smoothed out a few delays with the item shop, blah, blah, blah. Fixed a graphical bug with start of game tips. Fixed a bug that occasionally applied duo queue restrictions to queues other than ranked solo duo. Players who have negative LP, that's league points, from dodging ranked queue can no longer automatically reset their LP to zero with a single ranked win. That sounds good. Fixed a bug that occasionally caused players with low LP to be demoted when losing a ranked match that would drop them below zero. That also sounds nice. Fixed an issue with ranked teams sometimes not being promoted after winning a promo series. Fixed an issue with players sometimes being able to join a new ranked queue, new ranked team after leaving another. So anyway, a bunch of bugs fixing, mostly with matchmaking and LP stuff. New upcoming skins that will be released soon, Mecha Aatrox and Mecha Malphite. These are their Pacific Rim skins. Whether they call them that officially or not, that's basically what they are. So... That is our run-through for this particular patch. As I said, the big change is to Lucian, the big Lucian rework, and big-time Alistar buffs as well. Everything. Oh, and of course the jungle timers. I should mention them as well. Also the jungle timers, too. So there you go. That's what's in this patch. It's relatively minor. The Lucian stuff and the jungle timers are probably the biggest things in this one. Anyway, I hope everybody's been enjoying themselves. Have a great weekend. I'll see you guys again soon. Until then, take care. Have a good one.